Welcome to Sidekicks Direct, your source for the latest news and interviews straight from the Dallas Sidekicks. Help us grow the channel by hitting the subscribe button and being the first to be notified of new content from the team. Now, here's your host, Scott Wegener. Welcome into Sidekicks Direct. Sidekicks Direct presented by the U.S. Army. Put yourself in the boots of a soldier in the U.S. Army and take real steps towards becoming a leader while you make a real difference in the world around you. You'll gain leadership skills in one of more than 150 career fields. Find out if you qualify, take a step forward, and become a leader that can make a difference. See yourself in our boots at GoArmy.com slash DFW. Welcome back into our latest episode of Sidekicks Direct, folks. We are joined today by Sidekicks midfielder. Uh, just announced his re-signing, Raul De La Gala. Raul, how you doing, bud? Hey, doing good. Thank you, Scott. How are you? Uh, just living that uh, that corona life, I suppose, you know, which has different meaning, I guess, these last uh, few months. I, that used to mean sitting on a beach looking somewhere, but uh, the new corona lifestyle is mostly hanging out at home with my wife and dog and watching a lot of Netflix. That's good, man. Hey, at least you're spending time with your family now. All right, man. We're straight out of the gate. I want to get into a heavy hitter question. It's our first question presented by U.S. Army. What's your warrior? The bloody pick, the bloody picture pick mm -hmm. how you know the one i'm talking about where the blood is yeah, down your eye what yeah. happened there how did you get the cut on the eye tell me the story that goes behind it all right so uh you know i, I remember that picture very well in that moment uh we're playing uh one of the best teams in the league which is the monterey flash uh, it was a really tough game uh it's a it's a really hard team to to play against so you know we're giving it our, our, our all inside of the field and I think one of the times one of the Monterey guys tried to, you know, fly past me and I, I, I just remember getting in front of him uh, so I can block him from getting that that pass and, you know, we collided faces. Uh, so my eyebrow kind of hit his forehead a little bit. And, uh, you know, actually, I didn't even know I had uh, blood gushing down my face until somebody was like, hey, hey, man, clean that uh, blood off your face. So, um, you know, playing against the Monterey Flash, you know, it, it tends to get bloody. So, uh, you know, we, we have to leave it all in the field. Yeah, for sure. It is one of the most, uh, one of the more iconic pictures that, uh, that the sidekicks had this year. Um, wanted to shoot right out of the gate. That's our What's Your Warrior question presented by U.S. Army. Um, I want to talk, take you back to the beginning of the season. Uh, the night, the day before the opener against Mesquite. Uh, sidekicks had practice. You guys were practicing over at Inwood. You were really starting to kind of come into your own. You're finding your footing with the team. What happened the night before the first game of the season for you? Well, um, you know, uh, Profe Simon had, you know, gave out the roster. You know, we we're all anxious to see who, who was going to make it into the first game of the season, especially with our crosstown rivals, uh, the Mesquite Outlaws. Um, uh, Ended up being on the roster, but, you know, in the last play of our uh, of our practice the night before, we just went out to just kind of go over some things. I went into a tackle with one of my teammates. Uh, I think it was Josh, and I just felt a little tweak on the knee. On the knee and um, I didn't think much of it. I was feeling it. But, you know, with, with adrenaline going and the, the thought that I was going to play the next day against the Crosstown Rivals, uh, you know, I didn't think much of it. But when I woke up in the morning, it was a little swollen, uh, it was hurting, and there was just no way that I could play that day. So, uh, like you said, I, I was starting to, you know, get my feeling on with, with, with the team. I started playing a lot, and then, you know, that happened. So, uh, it, it was a big bummer for me just because it was the first game. Uh, it was going to be my first official professional game with the sidekicks. So, uh, you know, it, it was a bummer, but, you know, it, I had no choice but just bounce back from it. So I was really bummed. So I got to know you. This is the this is the first year that you and I had met was earlier this season. And, and I was really excited. I had seen you a lot in practices. And we'll talk about the preseason game a little bit later on. Um, but you played really well up in St. Louis in, in that. And um, so kind of walk me through because you were out for a little bit of time because the sidekicks had it was the opener against Mesquite and then it was Monterey and then it was Sonora and it was you you missed yeah we we had we had five games back to back uh, at the beginning of the season uh, 
So it, it wasn't just the the first game that I missed. It was the first five games. So I was out for for three weeks. Um, but you know, I I worked hard to to come back even stronger. And as soon as I came back, um, you know, and I was ready to go. I thought I was going to get to play against the Tacoma Stars. And, you know, Prophet Simone just decided, hey, you know, it's too early. We're going to leave you in the bench for – or leave you out for uh, for this game. So, I mean, that's what happened. I mean, I, I I just, you know, embraced it and said, you know what, let's just keep going with it and, you know, try to get – learn from it and, and get better and come back stronger. So when you finally made your debut, was it a little bit of a different feeling than you had the night before going into Mesquite where – it's the season opener. You really feel like you can make a difference in this game. You're slated to be uh, on the roster for the first 15. I mean, 12 hours, or 24 hours before the game, you end up hurting your knee. Was the feeling going into the kind of your second debut, was it a little bit different than the first one? Was it kind of like... Well, I mean, the, the, it was a regular season game, so it actually counted, you know? So I was more excited about... And just the rival that we were playing, the Mesquite Outlaws, uh, just made it more meaningful. So uh, just to miss that game in my official regular season debut was just a, you know, it was a setback. But like I said, you know, I, I had just a, I had to come back stronger than ever and, and prove to to the organization and to the staff that believed in me that, you know, I could, I could come back and, and still perform at the level that I was during the preseason. In the words of one of my favorite reality TV stars, the situation, the comeback is always greater than the setback. Exactly. Didn't you? Th I bet you didn't think you were going to get a Jersey Shore reference here on this podcast today, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, man. I want to take it away from soccer a little bit. Let's get to the family life and and things like that. I've had the the opportunity to to meet to meet Mrs. Raul and and meet the little ones. And I was doing a little bit of homework on you and reading our press releases from last year, and I kind of forgot this little tidbit about you. So we'll get to the the family in a second. But you have what, like twenty seven pets at your house? <laughs> Well, no, not really. I have, uh, we, we used to have four dogs. Uh, unfortunately, one passed to, to a better life, but now we, we have three dogs. We have two cats and uh, we have a tortoise living with us. Okay. So, you know, it, it, it's fun. I uh, have three kids, you know, Addison, two, two daughters, Addison, uh, Jimena, and then I have my little boy, uh, he's, which is 10 months old and his name is Bastion. And, you know, obviously my wife, Barbarita. So what's... Uh... What's like? What's life like around the uh, De La Gala household when you've got three little ones, a ten-month-old, uh, a tortoise, three dogs, two cats running around? You know, you're crazy. You're high energy all the time too. So, what is that like for uh, for Barbarita, and and what's it like being in the De La Gala household on a daily basis? <laughs> well, it's it's a good feeling. You know, you you work all day and then you come home and. As soon as you you pull up, you know the dogs know that you're there. They're greeting you at the door, waiting for you to pet them. So that's nice. And then you know, as soon as the kids find out that daddy's home, I mean, it's it, it's a great feeling to for them to come and give you a hug and know that hey, man, daddy's home. We're gonna get to play now. Even though sometimes I'm a little tired, I still take the time to just you know spend as much as as much time as I can with with the kids and especially uh, the little ones, you know, because they, they need the most attention. But um, it is kind of wild at the house, you know, the dogs running around. Sometimes we need to take them outside. They want to come in. Um, my little daughter wants to play. Um, so it, it, it's a hassle, but you know, it, it's something that we're really embracing. We're enjoying and, uh, we really want to just make the most of it. So what do, obviously we saw, um, you know, your, your kids over at, at sidekicks games on the field after the game and everything, what do they think of uh, dad being a professional soccer player? Do they think it's cool? Are they too young to kind of register all of it? What's the thought process for the little ones? Well, for the little ones, I mean, she, she loves it. You know, she, every time I, I, I start dressing up, she's like, you know, she knows that go sidekicks little chance. She starts <laughs> saying it. So for her, it's just like, wow, this is fun. And, you know, I actually got to run out in the field with my little three-year-old, Jimena, which she loved it. I mean, she went home and started telling everybody that, you know, she ran on the field with daddy. But, you know, I do have an older one. She's a teenager already. And uh, she, she was just a little surprised that uh, I went professional at, at the age that I did. And, you know, at, at 32, you're thinking, hey, you know, my career might be just, you know, Sunday league or anything like that. But, um, you know. 
I went to the tryouts, I gave him my all and she was just, you know, she can register that. And she was like, wow, man, I'm really proud of you, dad. I can't believe she went pro at, at the age that you did. So, uh, the older ones kind of like was surprised a little bit to, to find out that, you know, I'm playing for the Dallas sidekicks, but she's really excited and she loves it. So I'm not going to lie. When I found out how old you are, were, when I found out, I suppose Mm -hmm. I was shocked because I thought you were just a young kind of spring chicken, you know, just getting your legs underneath you because for 32, man, you have all the energy of some of these, of some of the young guys that were on the team. So how do you stay, how do you stay so fit? How do you stay, how do you keep that pace that you're able to, to keep at, you know, at your, at your advanced age, I suppose. Right. <laughs> well, part of it's just the family, you know, that, like you said, the kids just keep me energetic. They keep me on my toes. Uh, and at the same time, you know, since I am a little older, uh, I try to take care of myself. I eat right, you know, my diet's good. And then you do have to work a little harder than everybody else, you know, during preseason season, uh, when you're, uh, you know, going to the gym and you got to make sure that you, you're very disciplined because uh, you can still perform at a high level, but it just takes a little bit more out of you. And at the same time, the recovery has to be well, too. So it's just about, you know, being disciplined, being a professional and really taking care of your body and, and, and working your butt off. All right. So you mentioned the diet or the, the eating healthy. So we've had conversations about this. You are an insane person. And you are vegan, correct? Right? It's vegan? Yeah, vegan. Okay, so how, first off, how long ago did you go vegan? Well, went vegan about three years ago. You know, I, like you said, I started getting to that advanced age. I was about 30 or about to be 30. And I was like, you know what? It's time for a change. I want to do something different. Um, so my wife actually started first. And she's like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going vegan. I'm going to try it out for two weeks. And at first, I thought she was crazy, and you know, you're out of your mind. I'm I not going to give up. I'm not. I'm never going to give up my my meat, my fajitas. I love to grill. So, you know, after a little bit, you know, after those two weeks, I started noticing that. Hey, well, she's she's going through with it. So, sorry, my phone just fell. So I was <laughs> like, hey, you know what? Let me try it out with you. I'm gonna I'm gonna go vegan too. I'm gonna try it for the two weeks and see how it feels. And um, I tried it with her. Did it for the two weeks. And, you know, I I felt pretty good. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to do another two weeks, see if I can do it a month. And after that month, my body just started feeling a lot better. I started performing better, you know, in soccer. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to keep going with it. And, um, you know, ever since then, I never looked back. So, you know, it's one of the best things that I've done in, in, in my life. So, okay, well, easy. You have had like three kids, beautiful wife, great family, all that stuff. One you know, of them. Professional of them. soccer player. You got, you got some good things going for you, man. A pretty good career. Um, so I know that you talked to, obviously you and I chatted about it at practices and things like that. And I know you talked to some of the guys on the team about it. Did you convert any of the, of the guys on the team or any of the coaching staff over to the, uh, to the lifestyle? I did. You know, I'm, I'm a huge advocate. Anybody that talks about going vegan or is kind of talking crap about, you know, I give them some facts. I give them some insight on how it is to go vegan and all that. But, uh, you know, I did convert a couple guys that tried it. Uh, they didn't follow through all the way because it does take a lot of discipline. I mean, you get hungry and it's so easy just to go get a burger or chicken or anything like that. And delicious. So, uh, but one of the guys that, you know, really try to follow through with it was uh, Christopher Sendejas. Um, I think he did it for about a month and, you know, Felipe de Souza did it for about a week. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, and, and Profit Jesse, uh, our, our operations manager, he, he tried it too, you know, and he's trying to, you know, follow through with it every now and then he'll fall off. But he said that, you know, for the most part, he's trying to stay healthy and, and, and go vegan most of the time. Yeah. Was, so, he was actually just in the office a little bit ago. And I was chatting to him about it and he's like, yeah, I kind of fall off the wagon here and there, but, you know, try to go back to it. And he's like, mostly it was just like, I don't know what I could do it, man. Like, I think I could do like the hamburger portion of it, even the chicken, but I am, I love fish and I eat fish so often. So I could probably go like the pescatarian route. Um, Mm -hmm. But man, giving up cheese too. I'm, I'm a Wisconsin Everything. boy, man. Like I'm a Wisconsin boy. That's right. why we put cheese on. We put cheese in our soda. 
Like that's how we get down <laughs> with it. So that one, that one would be tough for me to, uh, to get. I'm telling you, it, it was tough at first, you know, I mean, those first two weeks that I went without eating meat, I remember I would walk into a gas station, like a QT and you have, they have, they have those hot dogs rolling. Yes. And I remember I used to smell those hot dogs and I, could, I would kind of just float over there, just <laughs> wanted to take a bite of one, but I resisted. And, uh, you know, now I don't even think about it. Now I'm just like, man, I wish I would have started this 10 years ago. All right, let's get away from all the, uh, the non-meat talk and uh, get into some more fun stuff. So you are actually, you were born in Mexico, correct? Right. And Mexico then City. you moved to, is it Cleburne, Texas, right, when you were a kid? Right. So, yeah, when I was six years old, uh, moved to, you know, from Mexico City to, to Cleburne, Texas. Uh, and just, you know, went through, you know, elementary, junior high and, and high school there, which, you know, uh, it's a good place, little small town area to grow up in. It's, it's little country, but you know, it, it was a good place to grow up, made a lot of friends, made a lot of friends. And then after that, you know, just, uh, went off to college and never went back to Cleburne. <laughs> right, fair enough. Been living in Arlington for the last 12 years. So what do you, do you remember anything about life in Mexico? I do, man. Uh, I have really good memories about Mexico. I mean, I, I remember just you know, being out in the street. So we had some technical issues. We're back in the saddle here. Uh, talk to me about life in Mexico. You, uh, you left when you were six, but, uh, you know, what was, what was life like in, uh, in Mexico city for, uh, for a young Raul de la Gala, man? Ah, uh, man. Um, I, I still remember like if it was yesterday, you know, I used to just be out there playing soccer uh, with all the other kids in the block. I mean, uh, you know, obviously soccer is the, the main sport in Mexico. So everybody wants to be a soccer player and everybody's playing. So I was just I think the only time that I was inside the house is when my mom was like, hey, come eat. You got to come eat. So um as soon as I ate, I was right back out in the street, just playing soccer with my friends, man. And, and you know, the whole block used to play. And, and I still remember, you know, we used to play, you know, we, we didn't have the best soccer balls in the world. So the soccer balls were a little flat. We used to, you know, instead of cones, we used to use rocks as, as the goals. So, it, you know, it's, it's very humbling experience. And at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm very, uh, you know, very um, happy for, 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 for living that moment. All right, man. I want to have some fun. We'll have a little bit of fun at some of your teammates' expense as well. Um, I want to do something. We do our uh, our fast five. Uh, so it's going to be five, you know, relatively quick questions, and just want you to give pretty succinct answers, I suppose. Um, so our fast five here: best person to room with on the road. <laughs> um, Juan Gamboa. Really? I, you guys got a lot of similar stuff, though, with the you know, the big growing families and, and things like that, right? Yeah, well, you know, he, he Gabo is really chilled. You know, he likes to stay in his room. He talks to his wife and, you know, kind of the same thing with me. I just, you know, it's all about the kids and the family. So we got that in common and, you know, just just very mellow guy. So I like to stay with him. All right, and all right. he was my first roommate ever, ever with the Dallas sidekick. So okay. is, he a, is he a snorer? You know what? I don't remember. Maybe I was, and you know, <laughs> I didn't know in sleep, but uh, not that I know of. All right. Who is not the dirtiest player, just the dirtiest person on the team? Um, I, I wouldn't say like the dirtiest person, but uh, I can say the dirtiest player is probably Allison. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just played him against him the other night. Uh, well, uh, there's two people. Allison and Clever are probably the dirtiest players I've ever played with. That's for okay. sure. I mean, sometimes you don't even have the ball, and Clever hits you from the back a little bit. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Um, what is your favorite soccer team around the world, whether it's a Premier League team, a national team, whatever it is? Favorite team? Well, obviously, I'm from Mexico, so I love the Mexican national team. That's my number one team. But um, I, I grew up, you know, loving um, Las Chivas de Guadalajara from, uh, you know, from Mexico as well. I mean, that's who I grew up just being a fan of. My whole family loved them. Um, you know, as I started growing up, obviously, I started watching European soccer. And, you know, when uh, the original Ronaldo played for Barcelona is whenever I started just, you know, paying attention to, to the Barca uh, squad. And, you know, ever since then, I just 
fell in love with it, especially because they're always bringing good players. And now with Messi, man, even more. So I'm a huge Barcelona fan today. All, <laughs> um, all right, man. This question is from uh, Jesse Yamas, director of soccer ops. So Ricardinho is known at practice as a guy who tries to meg everybody, not meg everyone. For those of you that maybe don't know what that is, a ball rolled between somebody else's feet, essentially. Um, and it, Gets a lot of laughs. So has uh, Ricardinho, have you gotten megged by him? Don't lie. Man, Because we know, I the, did, I know I did. the truth. I, so. <laughs> you know, I, I was probably one of the few guys that could say, that, hey, he's never megged me. But, you know, we, we started training about two or three weeks ago. And, you know, he had the ball down by the wall. And for whatever reason, man, I knew he was going to do it. I knew he was going to just roll it past. And, and I was ready for it. And for whatever reason, man, I, my – feet just got stuck to the ground and it was like in slow motion I just saw it roll through the you know between my legs and you know unfortunately he got me but you know Rick Aldino, man he's one of the most knowledgeable players that I've ever known and and played with so I mean he he knows the step that everybody's going to do I mean even though you know and he's also an inspiration because at his age and the way he's playing you know makes me think hey I might have a shot to play until I'm 40 as well but you know, it, he did make me one time and, and it was in slow motion. I saw it the whole time. That's the, oh my God, that's the worst. Yeah. Like, I, you know, it's coming and, you know, and you know, hey, he's not going to get me. And then he still gets you and you just kind of, you're trying to get do something with your feet and nothing happens and it just rolls through there. And, and then, you know, you're just like, all right, well, he got me. I think the worst part about the Meg is the fact that when, especially when you know it's coming is that you try to close your feet but you can't move them essentially. And then you end up almost falling over because you're trying to move your feet. He got um, last year. It might've been before a game, honestly, when you guys were getting warmed up and he got Freddie Mugen and Mugen almost tripped and went into the boards when he was trying to close his feet. It was one of the funnier moments that I had. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. You know, it was it's just it's hard, man. I, you know the Meg's coming, and yeah, you know yeah. Ricardinho just has that special talent that he just kind of rolls it with the bottom of his foot and in slow motion too. And then you're just like trying your hardest not to let it go through, and for whatever reason, it feels like you have roots under your feet, man. You can't pick them up. Um. All right. Final of our not so fast, fast five, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> Again, this is for this is Jesse's wording, not mine. Like, I want us to still be boys after this is over. Uh, debuting as an old guy, what was it like to be one of the uh, the oldest rookies in the MASL? You know, I was. Uh, it, it was a sense of pride. You know what I mean? That you know, whoever's looking to uh, you know be a professional soccer player, you know, the dream never dies. The dream's always there if you really want it, um, and you really you know. And, and embrace the moment that you're in and, and, and really just, you know, work your butt off that it can pay off. You know, for me, it was late in my career, but you know, it, it came at 32. So uh, it, it's just a good feeling to know that, Hey, I was a veteran rookie in the league and uh, to actually go professional at my age is, uh, it, you know, it's a, it's a great obstacle to overcome, you know, um, when, when I remember when I was telling, you know, my family and friends that, hey, man, guess what? Even here at work, I, I was like, hey, I went pro, you know, I'm playing for the Dallas Sidekicks, which, you know, here in Dallas and all of Texas, they know the Dallas Sidekicks and, you know, they're really famous. They've been around for a long time. And it was one of the first original professional franchises here that, you know, they, they, they didn't believe me. And, you know, as soon as they I started popping up on social media and then, you know, they saw my sign in. They couldn't believe it, but, you know, it, it's just a sign that uh, it's it's a thing of pride for me because, you know, it's something that I always wanted and um, it came late in my career, but hey, it, it came and, and I'm really happy for that. Better late than never, my man. Yep. Uh, so I want to get to the goal in the preseason momentarily, mm -hmm. but I just remembered, so you coach as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you're out in, you coach out in Mansfield for the revolution. Is that right? Yeah, right, Mansfield, Mansfield revolution. revolution. Yep. Um, with my guy, Edmundo. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I can't tell you how many co kids and fans came up to me and were like, oh my God, can we meet Coach Raul? Can we go see Coach Raul, Coach Raul? 
you have the biggest fan base for any rookie I think that I have ever seen. Um, (laughs) What's it like having, you know, the, not only your family, obviously there to support you, but you know, the kids you coach and the kids that you've coached throughout the years coming to see you and, and who know you as coach Raul, what was it like to see them after the games, meeting them on the field and signing autographs for them? You know, it's just a very humbling experience to, to live that, you know, um, uh, as a coach and as a leader, you always try to create and make a big impact in a positive way to your players and to whoever's around you. So, uh, you know, I was always inviting my team out to come. Uh, you know, fortunately, they always, you know, came and, and supported me. So um, it, it was just, you know, it, the words can explain, you know, how I felt when, when, when I did have that fan base. I mean, I think one time, one of the games I had, like, <laughs> no, no kidding, about 45 people there to, to come support me. So it, it, it was very humbling and at the same time, very exciting. And, and, and just to know that, hey, there's people out there, you know, looking at you, watching you and wanting you to do good in what you do. And at the same time, you know, just show that, you know, you, you can be a positive role model for, for those kids. All right, I finally want to get to it because, again, I had met you in the off season, kind of met you through the tryout process and um, had been to practices. And right before you guys went on that road trip, like I know the coaches were really excited about you making your debut against Mesquite. And you went on the road against St. Louis and you had a banger, dude. I mean, let's be realistic about it. It was a sick goal. Walk me through the goal, the confidence that it gave you. Uh, Just tell me everything you can about the goal and, and, for the folks that are watching on YouTube, um, you'll be able to see the goal here momentarily. But kind of walk me through what that goal did for you and how it made you feel when you when you hit that one. Well, it, it was my first professional game. You know, it, it was preseason, but it was my first professional game. And, you know, I remember that the, the fans were there and, you know, it was kind of – it was pretty packed, you know. So I had the butterflies in my stomach. I was a little nervous. I feel like one, you know, a little 18 year old kid, you know, making his big debut. I mean, I mean, I feel like a kid just being out there. So um, I, I was nervous, but, you know, just with the instructions of Prof. Simon, what he told me, you know, and my responsibility in the field, uh, uh, I think I did a good job. But uh, I remember when, uh, when the gold happened, I was just, you know, out on the left side of the field, just kind of marking my guy and making sure, you know, he didn't do any move or make a run. And then, um, you know, they were trying to score. The ball was kind of loose. And then somehow, I, I believe it was RJ that they got the ball. And I was wide open out in the left. And he, he passed it to me. And then, you know, I didn't even think about it twice. I, I knew I had that breakaway. So as soon as I took that touch, I knew I was going to try to take a man or two on. And, and, and that's what I did, man. I, I took it and I put it on that powerful right foot, you know, took one guy, put it to the side, and then just, ripped it up for 90, man. And it, it was a good feeling to, to have just because, um, you know, right before the goal, man, it, you know, they were just on us. They were being di- kind of dirty to us and, 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 and talking a lot of noise, you know, and, and when I hit that, that banger, man, it, it was just like a relief of frustration, just excitement, a lot of feelings. Um, so it, that goal just gave me so much confidence, you know, the whole team just, embraced me and, 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 you know, came up to me, said, good job, the, the, the coaches, and they were all excited about it. So it's, it, it was a really, really good feeling. It was one of the highlights of, of this last season. So um, I wanted to make more goals, but, you know, unfortunately, that's the only one I made. So do you think the highlight is cooler because the goalie completely comes off the ground in a – I don't know how to explain – for those of you again on YouTube that watch the highlight, the goalie, I mean, literally just like shoots his, his left arm up in the air to try to get it. And he completely leaves his feet. Do you think that makes the goal even a little bit bigger of a highlight? Like it makes it look a little Yeah, bigger? I mean, anytime the goalie, you know, reaches for the ball as much as he can and it still goes in. I mean, it, it's, it's a great goal. Um, I didn't know the goal was that spectacular per se uh when I when I did it in the field I knew like you know I, I think I, I shot it and I kind of just fell backwards and rolled so I didn't really see I just remember just hitting the back of the net but I don't remember the goalie going for it or anything like that I just but when I saw the highlight and you know people were telling me hey man that was a golasso man good job and 
you know, I was, thank you. But once I saw the highlight, I was like, wow, man, that was, it was a golasso. No, it for sure was. Uh, yeah. I remember when we posted it on, on social, it was like, you know, everybody with the, the big bug eye uh, emoji. Yeah, I mean, that, that I mean on Facebook in. and Instagram, I've, I've never had so many likes <laughs> until that goal, you know? It's awesome, man. Little little celebrity. Um, right, for a little bit. All right, man. I'm going to let you get out of here. But uh, one last question for you. You've got the sophomore season coming up, hopefully, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you expecting from yourself uh, and from the team in, uh, in your second season with the sidekicks? Um, I mean, what I'm expecting from myself, you know, I got one year under me. Um, I think that uh, with, with that year of experience that I got, I mean, it, indoor soccer or professional indoor soccer is just completely different from anything that I've ever played outdoor, regular indoor soccer and, you know, and Sunday leagues or anything like that. So to get that experience and, and to have uh, Profe Simon give me the opportunity to get those playing times as a rookie, um, I think, uh, you know, coming up to this season, it's, it, it's going to be a lot better. I, I, I know the game. Um, especially, you know, our, what our tactics are inside of the field and what my responsibility is. I think it's going to get a lot better. And, and as a team, you know, I, I think it's, uh, it's great because, you know, Profe Simon, um, you know, I think every, you know, game with a, a, a roster of 15, you know, we had about nine or 10 rookies in the field. And, uh, you know, really thankful for Profe Simon for giving us that opportunity to actually, you know, play so many rookies at the same time. So uh, what I can say is that, you know, all of us rookies that were there last year, we, we got that experience under us. We got a year in. And I think this next year yeah, with that experience, it's going to be a lot better. We know the game. And uh, I think the fans are really going to see the difference of uh, of playing and um, and I think we're gonna, you know, really work our butts off because there's no tomorrow, man. You know, our, the organization and the and the staff gave us that opportunity to get the, that experience, that that playing time that you don't really get as a rookie. So uh, thankfully, Simone saw that and, and and he gave us that experience. So when we come into the this season, uh, we're better off. We know the game, and each of us know our responsibility, and, and, and the responsibility that we have is to make playoffs. I mean, there's no tomorrow. There's no ifs or buts, no excuses. Um, we're, we're not going to be, you know, full-blown rookies anymore. So, you know, I just can't wait to, to get onto the field and really show the fans that, you know, we're a little disappointed last season that this year is going to be, you know, a lot better. We're, we're um, more focused. And, and I'm sure we're going to be working harder than ever to, to make that happen and make playoffs. And at the same time, you know, uh, make Profe Simon happy because he believed in this and, and really gave us that opportunity to get that playing time last year. That was an awesome answer to end on, my dude. I am very impressed. So uh, Raul De La Gala back for his second season with the Dallas Sidekicks. Hopefully a few more golazos in the regular season, though, this year. And uh, no injuries the night before games, man. Is that cool? No, man. Yeah, you know what? I mean, if we have a practice before a game, I think I'm just going to take it easy. No, no more Pretend going you have in hard. Food poisoning or something, you know? Ah, uh, coach, this, <laughs> my stomach's just a little. Yeah, you know what? 24 hour. I'll be good by tomorrow, though. Yeah, I'll be good tomorrow, man. I, my stomach's kind of hurting. So I'll make up something. If not, I'll just kind of, you know, take it easy and not go as hard as I did last year. So um, I'm looking forward to actually play the first game of the season this time. Awesome, man. That is our latest episode of Sidekicks Direct. For those of you watching on YouTube, click that subscribe button, which I'm pretty sure is right about there. Uh, Those of you listening on Apple Podcasts, hit the subscribe button or on Spotify, click that follow button for us. Raul, appreciate you sitting down with us here for the last half hour or so. And uh, we will uh, we'll catch back up at some point during the season and uh, talk a little bit more sidekick soccer, man. Hey, thank you, Scott. I appreciate it for the, uh, the interview. Great. Take care, bud. All right, buddy.